fella. Uh, thirsty? Be my guest. Okay, okay, let's not bogart the bottle, huh, champ? Well, that's good! Yeah, that's... Hey, come back here, you... License plate? Uh -huh, I wrote it down right away. 177 ORE. Yeah. I'll call it in. Mm -hmm. About what time is this? Oh, I don't know. I don't have a watch. But I was just coming from my doctor's appointment. So that's 9 30, uh, 10 maybe, maybe 10. 10? And your occupation, Miss Devon? Oh, don't call me Miss Devon. Hardly anybody calls me Miss Devon. Just Marley. Marley's fine. I'm a teacher. Okay, Marley. Teacher. His name's Charlie. You know him? No, but I live around here, and uh, I've heard the kids yell at him. You know, like little kids do. And, and they always call him Old Charlie. That'll do for a start. He didn't have any ID on him. What happens to him? if he doesn't have anybody. The city will bury him. People aren't born alone. They should not have to die alone. Well, Miss Devon... Marley... If you can stop by the station tomorrow and fill out a more complete report... Oh, sure thing. Uh, just when my doctor's appointment's over, about 10, 10.30 maybe. Okay. That'll do fine. Do you have a way to get home? Yeah, I'll shortcut through the park. I like to look at the trees. They're gorgeous this time of year, you know that? Yeah, you're right. Well, tomorrow, uh, about 10.30. Okay. What happens to Charlie if they don't find a last name for him? I, I mean, what do they put on the stone? Just Charlie, I guess. That's not right. Anything on the license? Yeah, but not much help. The owner said the car was stolen about three hours ago. But it's it's difficult to understand, Captain. Why, when my... Lieutenant. Uh, Lieutenant. It's uh, difficult to understand, Lieutenant, why when my son's car is stolen, you start questioning him as though he had done something wrong. Well, I don't want to shake you up, Mr. Bennett. But people have been known to tell untruths to the police department, where charges of manslaughter are involved. Are you saying my client is lying? No, Mr. Bennett wants to know why we're questioning his son. I just told him why. From the top, please. He's already told you. I got a lousy memory. From the top? 
Okay. I parked the car out in back of the house last night. I slept in this morning. When I got up, the car was gone. That simple. Uh, perhaps, uh, Lieutenant, if you'd locate the car first. We already have, down by River Road. Looks as if it's been hotwired. And if I may say so, Lieutenant, this is dangerously close to an illegal interrogation. There's substantial evidence the car is stolen. Chad here had no possible motive for hurting that old drunk. Mr. Kane, when you're right, you're right. Goodbye. Uh, Lieutenant, if uh, I can do anything to help out with the old guy's funeral expenses, I'd be more than happy to. You would? Yes, sir. Well, I'll bear that in mind and let you know. Thanks for coming down. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, see who tomorrow? All three of you, I expect, we're having a lineup. You see, there's an eyewitness. Fine. Just notify my office and let us know when you want us here. I'll do that, Counselor. Well, what do you think? I think it stinks. That's what I think. I think he wants to help out with the old man's funeral because he's got more guilt than a puppy's got puddles. But if that girl, uh, Marley, if she tags him, that's it, isn't it? Don't make book on it. We're dealing with relative values here. A rich... Promising young man with good grades and good connections versus a dead, nameless old drunk. And a high-priced attorney versus a junior prosecutor on the district attorney's staff. Are you saying that the grand jury can ignore eyewitness testimony? Stranger things than that have happened, Gillis. I know that old man is dead. Well, he could use a friend right now. There's no one on his side. Marley, are you in there? Come on in, Mrs. Samuels. I got your note on the, my door. What do you want to see me about? About how to send flowers to somebody. How do I do that? Is somebody you know sick? No, I, I want to send some flowers to the funeral for that man, you know. The one this morning. Oh, that man, yes. Well, it's, it's very simple. You go down to the flower shop on the corner. Do you know the one I mean? Uh-huh. And you tell the man how much you have to spend, what they're for, and where the flowers are to go. Now, they do all the rest. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Wouldn't you feel better if I went along with you? Mrs. Samuels, I love you. I do. But sometimes you treat me like I was before, and I'm not like that anymore. I'm sorry. I forget sometimes, that's all. I'll go by myself and I'll be fine. I really will. Okay. Marley, you just ought to remember that Dr. Castle has a lot more tests to make on you. I don't want you to get your hopes up too high. The movement of settlers into the Western Plains was one that found the Indian tribes inhabiting the region ill-prepared to cope with the modern technology and... I know you read better, Marley. It's just that I don't want you to get your hopes up too high, that's all. But I'm getting better, right? I'm getting lots better every day. Oh, yes, God love you, Marley, you are. You're getting lots better. Lots better, yes, yes. Number two, step forward. Turn to your left. Turn to your right. Thank you, you can step back in line. Next man, number three, step forward. Same thing. Thank you. You can step back. Would you ask the fifth man, please? Fifth man, step forward. Turn to your left. 
Turn to your right. Keep your head up, please. Look this way. That's the man I saw in the car yesterday. Are you sure? I'm sure that's the very same man I saw. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, Miss Devon. Thank you very much. If you can wait, I'll have someone give you a lift home. Oh, no, I, uh, I always take the shortcut through the park because the trees are so pretty. Don't you think they're pretty? Yes, I suppose they are. Uh, Gillis, get the Bennett boy, take him down to interrogation. I'll get his father on the lawyer. Lieutenant Riker doesn't like trees, does he? I think maybe he just has a lot of things in his mind. Come on, I'll walk you out. Our eyewitness has made a positive ID of your son as the driver of that car, Mr. Bennett. We're going to recommend that the DA's office seek a manslaughter complaint against him. Oh, you, you can't be serious. I'm serious enough to tell you that we're going to start questioning him right away, and we'd like both of you present. Down this way, please. Uh, we'll get him out on bail, Charles. Don't worry about that. What about getting him off? Worry about that. Uh -huh. It looks hot enough. No, not quite. Yeah. Just a little while longer. Uh, well. <laughs> Joe, what's the occasion anyway? Yeah, there's no occasion. That's a wedding gift. It's been sitting in the closet gathering dust ever since we got it. That's all. Well, are you sure that it's not because you were so relieved to have Mike home? Huh? Well, there was a very good chance he may have been nailed with a manslaughter charge this afternoon. That's right. <laughs> what is that? No, they had me in a lineup downtown. <laughs> I was touch and go there for a while. You yeah. looked very suspicious. Very. <laughs> and I was feeling very guilty. You know, it was a very good thing that Devon girl picked the other guy. Well, you know, Marley almost uh, picked you after she saw those crazy eyes of yours. Uh, what is this? A pick on Mike Day? Isn't it mm -hmm. always? <laughs> Do I get any help? Hey, what is it? What did you say the girl's name was who identified the guy? Marley, Marley Devon. 20s, brown hair, kind of cute? Mm-hmm. You know her? I hope not. I couldn't be the same one. Oh, you, I mean, you, you couldn't put a person like Marley on the stand, could you? Well, why not? Well, the Marley Devon that I knew, I knew from the hospital. Now, mm, I, I haven't seen her in about a year. Uh, she's retarded. She was listed as having the mental capacity of a seven-year-old. Hey, Dad, when the cleaning woman comes in tomorrow, could you ask her to check out the big closet? It's pretty damp in there, and that's where I keep my cashmere stuff. Oh. All right, Chad. I don't want anything to happen to your cashmere stuff. Uh, hey, uh, I better take a rain check, okay? No, not okay. I want to talk to you. Sit down. Chad, when you told me you were innocent in this thing, I believed you. Uh, lately, things have become a little more complicated. Because of that girl, you mean? The one who says she saw me? Well, now, how did you know the witness was a girl, Chad? I could see her in the lineup. The lights aren't all that bright. Yes. Well, be that as it may, the charges have been preferred. So I'll have to ask you straight out. Did you do it? Now, I'll go to the war for you on this. I'll spend every penny I've got. But I'll be working one way if you're innocent and uh, another way if you're guilty. So, let's level, Chad. Are you guilty?
Yes, sir. I guess I am. In the strictly legal sense of the word. What does that mean? Well, I didn't mean to hurt him. I was just playing around, kind of. In a strictly legal sense, you're guilty. Chad, in a strictly medical sense, that old man is dead. I'll stick by you. But first, we're going to get one thing straight. What's that? This. <laughs> Chad, I know your mother was always faithful to me. And every time I look at you, I have reason to wish that weren't the case. held up three times in the past two months. The businessman and the... Oh, go ahead. Don't let me stop you. Thank you. Uh, you all have descriptions of these three guys. Look for them, Javi. That's all dismissed. Is there anything that we can do for you? I brought a card for you to sign. Oh, for who? It's for Charlie Duffy. That's the man's name. I found out when I called them, and uh, I sent some flowers, so I thought the more names there were on the card, the more it looked like he had a lot of friends, see? Yeah. How oh, nice. I'd, I'd be honored. And me. Can I join in? I'm with them. Oh, sure. You probably saw Charlie around a lot, right? I mean, I figure that... Knowing his name and knowing everything we can about him is kind of like he's being reincarnated. Reincarnated? You, you believe in that kind of stuff? Yes, I'm coming back as a tree. A tree? Why a tree? Well, I'd, I'd be outside all the time, and I could watch kids play, and, you know, in case it got hot, maybe people would sit around and I could listen to them talk. And, and if a kid lost his balloon, I could, like, try and catch it for him, try and get it back for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got the right idea about it, there's no doubt. Lieutenant Riker, you want to sign? Hmm? Thank you for including me, Miss Devon. Okay. I got to get this to the florist, so I'll see you, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think? I don't know. I guess Marley could be the girl that Joe was talking about last night. Your wife knows her? Oh, I don't know for sure, Lieutenant. The girl Jill knows is a patient at the hospital. If it is the same one, oh, she's retarded. Oh, it's the same woman, Mrs. Danko. Absolutely. At least the same woman physically. Well, come on, Doctor. Don't be so mysterious. Well, I have to be a little. Because we don't quite know why Marley's changed as she has. All right. If you don't know why she's changed, can you tell me how? Oh, yes. We've almost doubled Marley's intellectual capacities. From a 7-year-old level to that of a 12- or a 13-year-old. You mean you've been treating her and you don't know why that change happened? because we don't know anything about Marley's early background. She was abandoned when she was uh, around three years old. Now, if she was abused or neglected in those three years, that could be the cause of her problem. Or it could be nutritional. I'm giving her megavitamins. Maybe that's what's doing it. 
I'm juggling any number of things, and I'd be hard put to tell you with absolute certainty what's doing the job and what isn't. Why the interest? Well, Dr. Marley is the only witness in a manslaughter case. So this treatment and her mental state will be very important to the trial. Yes, I would say so. Though it's a little out of my line, I tell you what. You have your husband talk with his boss. I have films of every interview I've done with Marley in the past two years. Now, if her guardian approves, I'd be more than willing to show them to the police. Okay? Well, I hope so, Doctor. I surely hope so. Well, isn't there something called disclosure? Where the prosecution has to tell us everything they have in the way of evidence. That doesn't mean they have to tell us anything about their witnesses. Witness, witness, singular. Well, <clears throat> I did find out a few things about her. Her name is Marley Devon. She lives at 2873 Commonwealth Avenue. I took the liberty of hiring a private detective firm to find out anything that might be useful. And? Nothing. Uh, nothing overt, that is. Uh, no criminal record or anything like that. However, she did list her occupation as a teacher. Now, the state has no record of ever having issued a, a, a teacher's certificate to anyone by the name of uh, Marley Devon. Well, will this help us to discredit her story? No. Maybe it might help us discredit her. What you're going to see is one of the first interviews I had with Marley, going back about uh, two years. We hadn't yet started her on the regimen of megavitamins and the drug she's on now. Why, has anyone else taken it? Well, this is an experimental program, Mr. Ryan. There are a small number of cases, I can tell you that. Hmm. Uh, the things this Devon girl is taking, uh, could they cause her to imagine things? Hallucinate? She didn't hallucinate that license number, Mr. Ryan. Part of the job of an assistant DA is to ask the questions the defense is going to ask if they find out about the state the girl's mind is in. Was in, Mr. Ryan. Was in. Lights, please. Now, this was shot through a two-way mirror. Or, um, uh, maybe I could be a bus driver. I don't, I don't know which one. Why would you want to be a bus driver? Because I don't think that I know enough how to be a princess. Why, of course you do. No, no. I've got very big ears, you know, and, and Snow White had really little ears. Mirror, mirror. I'll my teeth. Now, see? Hmm. <laughs> Lights, please.
Well, you're the DA's man, Mr. Ryan. What do you think? I think I'm going to have to check, Lieutenant. Uh, this is a unique situation. Frankly, the office may want to discontinue prosecution rather than to become entangled in something like this. I mean, the dead man wasn't exactly Howard Hughes, no, was he? No, he was just a man. Did you ever meet my wife? Jill, Marley. We met a long time ago at the hospital. Did we? I'm sorry, I don't remember you. <laughs> but uh, that's that's for you, Jack. What is it? It's brownies. I made them myself. Oh, out of sight. How come? Because you signed the card for Charles Duffy. And because I thought it'd be a thank you. And because I didn't want to wait until the uh um, preliminary hearings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marley? Well, there's a, a chance that there might not be a preliminary hearing. There might not even be a trial. Well, why? I, I know that there has to be a reason. So what is it? You know, Marley, sometimes things like this can get very complicated. It happens every day. There's not one of us who hasn't had a case thrown out of court because of a technicality. Well, could you tell me what the technicality is, then? Marley, it's um, the kind of thing that's just so hard to understand. It do you understand it? Uh, look, we're, we're talking about a possibility that... You, you know, sometimes I think that I don't understand anything. I mean, um, people are starving and we're all supposed to be rich. And people are killing people and we're all supposed to want peace. I mean... What a really dumb world sometimes. Hello. Yes, Lieutenant. Okay. And thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Sit down, Marley. Seems that Lieutenant Rikers talked to a man in the DA's office, and they're going to go ahead with the prosecution. Sometimes the world ain't so dumb after all, huh? Yeah. See? Let me show you that poster I was talking about. Oh, yeah, I want to see that. It's my favorite one. See? Oh, those, those trees are beautiful. That's really nice. It's cold in here. Well, it's probably because you left that window open there. Oh, no, I never leave that window open. Say he was a pro. The way he fought, 
The way he got in, he knew what he was doing. Sounds like you and Marley got there before you could find anything worthwhile. What did he take? Mm, nothing, really. Just a calendar that Marley had taped to the wall. It tells us a great deal about the kind of schedule the girl keeps. Well, how does that help us? Well, I'm not sure that it does yet. Great, right, possibly. Possibly what? She has a doctor's appointment. This is the only consistent thing I could find. With a Dr. Castle every other day at Memorial Hospital. Well, if she's in ill health. Let's just say that that's something that bears looking into. Mind a question? Uh, of course not. How did you get your hands on that calendar? What calendar are you talking about, Chad? Well, um, I don't have a watch, but it must have been around 10 or so. And would you tell us exactly what you saw? Um, I saw this little red car, and it was chasing this man around and around a parking lot. And then the man, his name is Mr. Duffy. Something must have happened to his heart because he sort of grabbed at his chest and then he fell down and then he was dead. Uh, did you have a clear view of the driver of the car? Yes. And the top was down? Yes. Now, is the driver of that car in this room? Yes, he's over there. The record will show that the witness is pointing at Chad Bennett, the defendant in this case. So ordered. No further questions. Your witness. Uh, now, Miss Devon, this is just a preliminary uh, hearing. I see no point in going over ground that you've already covered, but just a question or two, and then uh, we'll let you relax. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Devon, manslaughter is a very serious charge. I hope you don't find me rude if I ask you to state whether or not you are positive that it was Chad Bennett that you saw driving the car that morning. Oh, I'm positive. I really am. It was him. You stated you had perfect eyesight. Yes, sir. And you also told officers uh, Webster and Gillis that uh, you were a teacher. Yes, sir. And how on earth do you account for the fact that the State Board of Education has no record whatsoever of having issued you a teacher's certificate. Objection, Your Honor. This has nothing to do with the matter before this court. This has to do with the credibility, Your Honor, of this witness, and nothing could be more germane to this court. Counselor? Objection overruled. Witness will answer the question. Witness will answer the question, please. I forgot it. Do you have a teacher's certificate? Uh, no. No, I don't. Then why did you tell officers Webster and Gillis that you were a teacher? Now, why did you lie? She didn't lie. She is a teacher. She's the best one I have. It's not a school. It's a daycare center for the working mothers of the neighborhood. Now, most of our children are two or three years old, and they know all about school and what goes on there, so naturally they call us teacher. Now, technically we're not, but that's pretty hard to explain to a two-year-old. And Miss Devon's referral to herself was a mistake, but not a lie. Not a lie at all. Like I said, Molly is the best teacher I have. People like her are very good with little ones. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that last part. I said, people like Marley are very good with little ones. Huh. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Kane? Oh, no, Your Honor. We're 
quite satisfied that uh, Miss Devon's statement is a question of terminology and not a willful attempt to mislead. Very well. There being no further testimony, we will set trial date for the 18th of this month at 10 o'clock in the morning. All rise. Police have to do stuff like this all the time, right? I mean, uh, stuff like testifying and stuff. Yeah, all the time. Don't you get scared? All the time. We have a major emergency at the nurse's station. We're out of powdered cream. Is it okay if I read you? Sure, go ahead. Doctor, is there something wrong? Take a look. He's dead. He's dead, all right. So was another one besides that one. Jill, both those animals were on the same kind of regimen I put Marley on. It's a two-way mirror. We use it a lot in this kind of work. That's okay. I guess that's okay. Barley? I uh, told you from the start that uh, this is what we call a pilot program. There are a number of others like it all across the country. Now, when you're dealing with something like... Why can't I have my medicine? I mean, j just tell me about that. Because there, there's a chance that there are some side effects that we hadn't anticipated. And those side effects could hurt you. Well, without my medicine, does that mean that I go back to the way I was before? I don't know, Marley. Doctor, you said the side effects showed up during stress functions tests. Yes. Should Marley testify at the trial? I don't believe so. I voted in the last election. I read all the newspapers, and I listened to all the speeches on TV. And Mrs. Samuels said that I probably knew more about the candidates than anybody she ever saw. And then when I pulled that lever, in that machine, I thought this is what it's like to be a real person. Not somebody that gets led around or somebody that people smile at and pat on the head. And uh, a real person, you know what I mean? I want to go on being a real person, Dr. Castle. I don't want to go back the way I was before. The medicine might hurt you, Marley. And I can't take that chance with your life. I want to ask you a favor, okay? I asked you if you think about what you want to be when you grow up. Remember that? No. Nope. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. 
you have gray hair because you're old? Well, I have gray hair because, uh, I have gray hair, that's all. Mrs. Sanders said that's, um, to make you look more like a doctor. The gray hair. Ah. Uh -huh. Don't say that! Now, have you decided what you want to be when you grow up? I want to be... Maybe I could be a princess. Or Don't talk so... Uh, maybe I could be a... Dumb! I, I don't know what you want. Why would you want to be a bus driver? Because I don't think that I know enough how to be a princess. Uh, of course you do. No, no. I've got very big ears, you know, and, and Snow White has really little ears. You stop it! Mirror, mirror. You stop it! To get Dr. Castle? No. Nope. Uh, no. I want to testify, that's all. Marley. Then the doctor said you shouldn't. I'm 23 years old, and I can testify because I want to, and because people shouldn't forget about people like Charlie Duffy, and because a real person would testify. And that's what I'm going to be just as long as I can. Approximately how far away were you when Mr. Duffy collapsed? Um, I always measure things in football fields, and it was about a quarter of a football field. Hmm. Well, close enough to get a good look at the driver? Yes. Is he in this room? Yes, he's over at that table in the gray suit, indicating the defendant. Now, there's no doubt in your mind that Chad Bennett is the man you saw driving that car. No doubt he's the one. Thank you. No further questions. Your witness. All right. <clears throat> Miss Devon. Well, we've been through all this before, haven't we? No need to retrace ground. We've already covered, wouldn't you say? I guess so. Well, let's not. Let's start fresh. Do you know a Dr. Leonard Castle? Uh, did you hear the question, Miss Devon? Objection, Your Honor. This is improper cross. Mr. Kane? Your Honor, this has a bearing on the competency of uh, this witness. Objection overruled. Proceed. You do know a Dr. Castle? Yes, I know him. As a patient? Yes. Would you mind telling this court just exactly what Dr. Castle's specialty is, Miss Devon? Miss Devon, are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, then can you answer the question? Or did you forget it the way you did at the uh, preliminary hearing? Dr. Castle's... Dr. Castle specializes in helping people like... In helping people who are retarded. And I'm retarded, and he helped me. 
Well, then, <laughs> perhaps I'm talking to the wrong person, Miss Deb, and it might be better to get an expert oh, no. on these matters. Oh, no. No, you're talking to the right person because I'm the person that saw him, and he did it. And the truth doesn't change just because of who said it. I... Oh, now, would you stop it? Just leave her alone. She's not doing anything to hurt anybody. Right, please. please leave her alone. Please. Order. There will be order in this court. Okay. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Move it. If only that dummy hadn't seen me. You're looking at ten years, buddy. You tell me who's a dummy. Come on, move it. Marley, are we supposed to say anything or do anything or anything? I don't know. Well, that's your idea. I guess if you don't know, nobody does. Now's the time if there's anything to be said. This is a farewell tree for a man that we didn't know. But somebody knew him and somebody loved him. And so we decided that we'd plant this tree because the people that did love him didn't know to be here to do it. So this is a tree. I forgot his name. Uh, his name's Duffy. This is a tree for Mr. Duffy, who looked like a very nice man. <laughs> 